Hello, everyone. Welcome to Learn Audacity. Today, let's talk about sample rates and bit depth as it relates to Audacity. Digital waveforms haven't been around that long. Really, they began to be developed in the 1970s. Prior to that, there really were no digital waveforms. I remember the recording studios of yesteryear. We had the big one-inch audio tape. Everything was analog. Analog being the signal that leaves our mouths and that is traveling between my mouth and the microphone or my mouth and someone's ear if I'm having a conversation. That's analog audio. And that's what we used to capture. But then in the 1970s, the technology began to be developed more seriously about converting analog signals into digital signals. Our computers can't do anything with analog signals. In order for Audacity to work correctly, my analog voice or my analog audio that I'm producing needs to be converted into a digital format. Once it's converted into a digital format, Audacity or any other uh, digital audio workstation knows what to do with it. But until it's converted, they can't, they can't do anything with it. They don't know what it is. They can't process it. They don't they just look at it and it doesn't mean anything to them. So this process of converting analog to digital needed to happen. And that's basically what happens. If you've got a USB microphone and you're talking into your, your USB microphone, that USB microphone has what's called an analog to digital converter. And it's converting the analog signal that's leaving your mouth or your acoustic guitar or whatever you're recording. And it's converting that signal into digital format and then sending it to your computer Audacity grabs it and says, hey, I know what to do with this. This is my stuff. These are my people. And I know what to do with them. But until it's converted to digital, it's really kind of useless to Audacity. If you have a microphone interface, let's say you've got your your XLR analog microphone plugged into a Scarlett interface that's then plugged into your computer, that Scarlett interface has an analog to digital converter in it. It's converting your analog signal from your analog microphone into a digital signal and doing the same thing. It's sending it to your computer. Your computer takes it, Audacity sees it, or whatever DAW you're using sees it and says, hey, I know what this is. I recognize this. Again, these are my people and come on in and let's uh, have a digital party together. So once we have digital audio on our computer, There's some things that we need to understand, and there's some things that we need to understand related to Audacity that we're going to talk about today, and that is two things. We're going to talk about sample rate and bit depth, and I'm going to show you some examples of both and some do's and don'ts of both, depending on what you've got going and how you're recording and using your audio. So let's take a look at the screen that I've got open here. I've got a little project that I recorded. I recorded three tracks just a few minutes ago. I recorded the first one at a sample rate of 22,050. I recorded that middle one at a sample rate of 48,000. And I recorded the bottom one at a sample rate of 96,000. And then you'll notice down here in the bottom left corner, my project sample rate here in Audacity is 44,100. So my project sample rate is completely different from all three of these tracks. These three tracks were all recorded at different sample rates. And I did this to show you that you can have audio tracks in your project that have been recorded at different sample rates than what your project rate is. And they work just fine. So what exactly is a sample rate? A sample rate is the number of samples per second that your audio has been sampled. So in this example here on the screen, that top track was sampled 22,050 times per second or 22.050 kilohertz. The middle track was sampled 48,000 times per second, or 48 kilohertz. The bottom track was sampled at 96,000 times per second, or 96 kilohertz. And if I play this for you right now, you'll hear that each sample plays just fine, sampled at its own sampling rate. So I'm gonna push spacebar right now, and let's give it a listen. This track is being recorded at 22,050 samples per second. This track is being recorded at 48,000 samples per second. This track is being recorded at 96,000 samples per second. 
So they all sound the same. Apologies for the echo. I just used my internal microphone on my laptop and I was in the other room that isn't sound treated. So there's that echo. But it illustrates my point. And my point being that I've got three different tracks sampled at three different rates and they all sound just fine. I'm going to rewind this back to the beginning here while we continue our discussion. So even though I've got three tracks recorded at three different sample rates, my project rate down here in the bottom left corner again is 44,100. That simply means that when I export this project, if I export it into a wave or an MP3, whatever file I export it into, that exported file is going to be sampled at 44,100 hertz. So if I go up to file and I export it and I go through that process, it's going to grab my project sample rate down in the left corner and it's going to export it at that rate unless I change it. Now to save us some time, I've already done this. So if I bring up my finder window, and again, I'm on a Mac, so mine's probably going to look a little bit different than yours. You'll see here that I've exported three different files. I've got one at 2250, one at 441, and one at 48,000. And you'll notice also that down here on the right side of this file, and again, I'm on a Mac, you can see that my sample rate on this top file was 22 kilohertz or 22.050. It's a 13 second file and the bits per sample were 32. We'll talk about that in just a minute. You'll also notice that the size of the file is 1.2 megabytes. Now, if I click on the second file down that I've exported, I exported it at 44,100. So it, it essentially doubled from 22,050 to 44,100. The, the sample rate doubled. I've got twice as many samples going on in that second file. So when I click on it, you'll see that the file size changes from 1.2 megabytes to 2.3 megabytes. It almost doubles because the sample rate doubled. Now, in a 13 second file, this isn't a big deal, but if you've got an hour long file or an hour and a half long file or a 45 minute file, the file size difference can be huge because we're taking up more disk space, the higher the sample rate, because we're getting more information out of our analog uh, signal as we, confer as we convert it to digital, we're getting more information out of it, which is going to increase our file size. Now, if I go down to the 48,000 file, you'll see that it jumps to 2.6 megabytes, not that big of a jump, just a little bit, but you'll also see that it's sampled at 48 kilohertz or 48,000 times per second. Now, let's go back up to the top one, and let me just play this for you, and let's see what it sounds like. This track is being recorded at 22,050 samples per second. This track is being recorded at 48,000 samples per second. This track is being recorded at 96,000 samples per second. So it sounds nice and clear. So again, there's that echo. But if we listen to the 441, what does it sound like? This track is being recorded at 22,050 samples per second. This track is being recorded at 48,000 samples per second. This track is being recorded at 96,000 samples per second. And finally, if we look at the last one here. This track is being recorded at 22,050 samples per second. This track is being recorded at 48,000 samples per second. This track is being recorded at 96,000 samples per second. You can see that regardless of the individual track sampling, our project sample rate is what determined the file size, and what determined the final sample rate of the overall project. That's how those two things relate. Now let's go back to our Audacity window here for just a minute, and let's talk about bit depth. When we talk about bit depth, we're talking about this number right here, which right now in all three of my files, or all three of my tracks, I've got 32-bit float selected. If I come up to one of these tracks, let's go up to the top one, and since I'm on a Mac, I'm gonna control click, if you're on Windows, I'm pretty sure it's a right click. But if I go down to sample rate, you can see there that I can change the sample rate of this file. We're going to do that in just a second, or of this track rather. I can change the sample rate of individual tracks right here. I can also do it up in the tracks drop down menu, but this is simpler to do. But if we look at format, you'll see that we have three options with format, and 32 bit float is what's selected. 16-bit format or 16-bit PCM, that just means pulse code modulation. Kind of just another acronym to uh, memorize if that's what you want to do, pulse coded modulation. 
But this format, or this bit depth rate, refers to the size of each sample. In other words, if I sample a file at 16-bit format, which is the standard for music CDs, remember music CDs back in the olden days, or maybe you still got some, music CDs had to be sampled at 44,100 hertz at a bit depth of 16 bits. And the bit depth here, 16, 24, and 32, is simply a reference to the amount of information in each sample. In other words, if my sample rate is at a 16-bit depth, that means that for each sample, I'm using 16 bits of information. So if I multiply 16 bits times 44,100 samples per second, that tells me that I need 705,600 bits of storage per sample. And that takes up disk space. If I'm at 24 bit in my bit depth, and I'm at 44.1 kilohertz in my sample rate, then I need 1,058,400 bits of storage space per second of recording. And that's a lot of data. Audacity defaults to 32-bit float. 32-bit float, unlike 16-bit and 24-bit, simply means that you can exceed 0 dB in your recording. Now, for a podcast or ACX audiobooks, if you're exceeding 0 dB in your recording, maybe you went on a rant or something, I don't know, it's more applicable to music or to live music settings than it is to sitting in a room like this just recording voice audio, you know, voice-only audio. 24-bit is sufficient. 16-bit is sufficient. But Audacity defaults to 32-bit float, and I leave it there because, hey, why not? It's good quality recording. It takes up a little more disk space, but for spoken word and for the length of projects that I do, it's not all that noticeable. Really, the video portion of this is what's noticeable to me, not so much the audio. But if we go back down here to the uh, rate, to the sample rate for just a minute, like I mentioned a moment ago, I can change this here, but be careful doing this. Because if I change, say, from 22,050 to 441, I've essentially doubled the sampling points. And what that's going to do, it's going to change my audio. Other than trying to explain it to you, let me just show you. If I come back here and I resample this at 441, you can see that my audio just shortened. Why? Because the sample rate doubled. And so my audio went to half its original size. Now, if I play this, give it a listen. This track is being recorded at 22,050 samples per second. And so, yeah, basically ruin that uh, as far as if I were to save it right now, it would basically be gone. But I'm going to Command Z to undo that. Again, if you're on Windows, Control Z is the universal keystroke for undo. And I'm going to leave it where it is. Now, here's one word of caution down here in the project rate. If you change this from 44,100 and you're producing ACX audiobooks, your ACX audiobooks will fail the ACX quality control check if you export your file as anything other than 44,100. If you export it as 48,000, it's going to fail. And again, I can change that right here. If I come down to my project rate and I click on that, I can select other projects, project rates in order to export my file. And that's what I just showed you here back on my file manager. I had changed that project rate for each one of these, and I exported the, the entire project as a WAV file, all three tracks as, as a WAV file, even though the tracks in each one of these exports was sampled at a different rate. The project rate is what you see here in the file name, 22,050. I changed the project rate, I exported it. I changed the project rate to 44.1, I exported it. I changed the project rate to 48,000, I exported it. And again, that's reflected here in the file itself. So let's go back over here to Audacity. And let me show you where you can set this. If you go into Preferences, and you select Quality, this is where you can select your default sample rate for new projects. Now, if I change this sample rate right here, to 44, uh, let's say 48,000. Let me just do that real quick. If I change that to 48,000 and I click OK, it doesn't change the existing project rate. It only takes effect if I relaunch Audacity and I start a new project. And I think I found a bug because it's also supposed to take effect if I come up here to File and I just click New. 
and I open up a new project without closing Audacity, check out the project rate. It's still 44,100. Let me close that out. Now, since I've changed my preferences, let's go back there and double check. I've changed my preferences to 48,000. I'm just going to cancel. If I save this file now, and I'm going to hit Command Z to save it, and then I go to File New. Now my new window's at 48,000. I think that's a bug. I think I found a bug in Audacity because that isn't supposed to happen, I don't think. But I'm going to close out of here. I'm going to go back up to Preferences. And I'm going to set this back to 44,100. That's where I leave mine because I do do audiobooks. I'm just going to click OK. Then let's go back up to Preferences because we haven't been there enough yet. And let's open up this window again. And you can see that the default sample rate is at a 32-bit float. I leave mine there, but why not? It's, it's good audio. Sample rate conversion is needed whenever your project rate differs from your track rates, which is what we've got in this sample. Our project rate differs from all three of the track sample rates. So these real-time conversion options are needed because our project rate differs from the track rates. The real-time converter, or the, the real-time conversion rate here, is specifically for playback within Audacity. Medium quality and the dither effect none are default, and so I leave them there. On the other hand, the high quality conversion is for exporting your file into storage. In other words, you're going to put it on your hard drive, you're going to upload it into a podcast, you're going to upload it into a video like this one, something like that, something outside of Audacity. That's where high quality conversion comes in. The default sample rate is set to best quality. Remember, we're taking three tracks in this example and we're exporting them all at 44,100. And we want the best quality that we can get out of that export. The dither option has to do with any noise or distortion that's generated as the file is resampled. Shaped dither is the default in Audacity. Shaped dither simply means that any noise that appears is going to be hidden as best as it can be in the higher frequencies of the exported file because they're harder to hear there. That's all that that means. And so I leave it at shaped. That's the default. I leave it at best quality. It says slowest, but it's never really been slow for me. And that way I know that I'm getting a good quality export and that any noise that is being produced is masked up in those higher frequencies where it's harder to hear. So that's where you set these is right here in Preferences. I'm just going to click OK. And let's recap. We've got three different tracks here sampled at three different rates. We're set up right now to export them at 44,100. So our final project that we export, or it's a WAV file or an MP3 file, is going to be 44,100. Before I let you go, let's talk about one more thing. If I'm going to export this project as an MP3 for an audiobook, for ACX audiobooks, you've got to, again, have that sample rate set at 44,100 because that sample rate shows up when you do an MP3 file. In fact, let's do that. Let's come up here and let's export. Let's export as an MP3. And when we export as an MP3, we'll just leave that same name there, samplerates.mp3. I'll click Save. And now if we go look at that file, there's our MP3 right there, samplerates.mp3. And if we look down here in the corner, we can see it's sampled at 44,100. It has to be in order to pass ACX. But something else that I kind of blew by, I'm sorry for that, let's go back and do this again. Let's say I'm going to export this again, export it as an MP3. This window comes up and says, what quality do you want? I have it set at 192 kilobits per second. That's a minimum for ACX. If you're exporting an audiobook chapter and you do something less than 192 kilobits per second, it's not going to pass ACX. You'll notice too that the bit rate mode is set to constant. That's another ACX requirement. And I force this to mono. If you are recording audiobooks for ACX, you can be either stereo or mono, but all of your book has to be the same. You can't have one chapter mono and one chapter stereo. They all have to be mono or stereo. And the bit rate is simply a reference to how much of the original quality of the audio do you want to keep when you export it to a compressed MP3 file. The higher the bit rate here, 
The more of that original information you're preserving, the higher quality your MP3 is going to be. But again, there's a trade-off for disk size if you have a huge file. And if disk space is a problem for you, you might want to consider that. So again, the bitrate mode is constant, and the bitrate itself is a measure of how much of the original audio, quality of the audio, do I want to keep when I export it into this compressed format. So I'm going to cancel out of there, because we already did that. And I will let you go at this point. This question came up in one of my courses on Udemy, and I had a good time kind of bantering that back and forth a little bit and answering that. Two or three of my lessons in a course that I have called Audacity Bootcamp, Beginner to Advanced, deal with this topic. And so I answered a couple of questions for one of my students in there, and I thought, you know, this would be good information to bring out here on YouTube and to talk about a little bit so that uh, we get a better handle on it. And hopefully I gave you a better handle on it and didn't confuse you. So as we close, just a reminder that I do teach on Udemy. I have two classes on Audacity. One is called ACX Audiobook Production Using Audacity. It's exclusively Audacity. There's no third-party plugins that come into play. I show you how to record, edit, and produce quality audiobooks using only Audacity. My second Audacity course there is called Audacity Bootcamp Beginner to Advanced. It's designed for podcasters, and it's seven plus hours of video content. I'll have a link to both of those in the description below. My third course that I teach is on the Zoom H6 recorder that I use all the time, and it's called Zoom H6 Audio Recording Essentials. Again, I'll have links to all three, and that's all I have for you right now. So until next time, you all take care.